Mama. Oops, I forgot to take off the thumbnail. But welcome to Nary Nirvana. Uh, bringing you another episode of Long Story Short. Episode 23. Super stoked to be here. Uh, I want to take this time to thank our sponsors, Cover Price. Uh, so make sure you're using the code Nirvana14 if you haven't signed up for an account yet. And you'll get a 30-day unlimited membership for only 99 cents. Uh, I know a couple of guys on our panel here, right for cover price. And then I want to thank our sponsors, Bird City Comics. And make sure you're using the code Nirvana to get a 15% discount. Yeah, check out uh, Matt's uh, year in review that he just wrote on on Cover Price, where he looks at you know the best selling books of the year. It's a really good recap of what went on. A ton of work has to go into that thing. So shout out to Matt. Um, it's it's a fantastic read if you haven't seen it yet. I think he just posted it today. How's it going, Carter? What's up, man? Nothing. So did you finish cleaning out that shop? Like I think I think I. I think we're done. There's like about a handful of boxes left, and I'm tempted to go back. You might as well. It's like that last hurrah kind of situation, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just take it all. Yeah. I mean, speaking of someone that took it all, I mean, Red Hood comic, like st stealing all those books from half price, like add a steal. Bro, um, there, you know, the guy was taking forever to check me out. And there was like people looking at my books, like, oh, she's got that Wolverine. You get the fuck off, dude. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw so, that Wolverine one in there. I mean, I love that back cover. So, for the yeah, the... dude. So, like, I got that for 75 cents. So, um, <laughs> so I can easily double my money, <laughs> <laughs> even on whatnot. <laughs> yeah. I started, I started off at a dollar, I'm already winning, you know, <laughs> even That's after true. fees. If it's <laughs> all right, how's it going, Josh? I am good. How are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, before we start, uh, I'm going to give away a set of books real quick. Uh, I'll put myself on the big screen. So this, these are, I, I want to call them future ghost books. Uh, this is Nottingham number six. This is, uh, from Mad Cave. This was given at the Diamond Retailer, uh, Summit. Uh, it is limited to 250, but you'll also get issue number seven. So, uh, all you have to do is comment in the chat currently. But I'm going to give this set away for people that comment uh, on last week's episode. And I have that wheel made. So let me take me off the big screen and share the wheel of names. All right. Before we spin the wheel, uh, I want to say hi to a bunch of people that have joined us. We have GT Key Comic. How's it going? Stepford Wolf. What's up? Paul Holloway. I saw your name on the wheel. Triple C, how's it going? Metal Face, what's going on? Uh, Joffrey Castro, how's it going? Lords of Brooklyn, welcome in. All about gaming, how's it going? Liger style, what's what's the deal with you? All right, so let me shuffle up the names a couple times. One, two, three. All right, good luck, everyone. And the winner just messaged me on Instagram, and I will mail it out as soon as possible. Uh, and then to the person that messaged me over the the winter break, I will mail out your book as well. So, I think I seen it one last week, right? Is it going to stop? It won something recently, yeah. Yeah. So I think he won the. Ooh, is it going to go? Oh, it went. Ooh, oh, wow. sorry about that. Dude, you what jinxed him, bro. You jinxed him. Bro. That's dirty, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you put that bad juju on him, man. I was hoping he was going to win again because, like, I know he won the uh, the the hive giveaway. So. He's all, I seen what you done. I seen it. <laughs> the heart attack settings, right? All right. So, Mojo Pen, if you're watching live or catch you're catching this on the rewind, hit me up on Instagram, Yeezy Yee. -E. Um, and send me your address and I will mail those out to you. So congrats. Uh, but let's get into it for the reason why we're here. All right. We'll hop right into it tonight. Um, yeah, you know, normal, normal discum disclaimers apply. Uh, we're not, this is not a buy list or a spec list or anything like that. We're just talking about some cool books, some books to keep 
uh, in the back of your mind when you're out there digging, uh, that's the best thing to use this list for. Um, so we're going to jump in. we got a ton of books to talk about tonight. Some big ones, some small ones, some, some in between. But uh, let's get after it. All right, we're going to start off with a magic cover because why not? Uh, this is one that I think goes under the radar quite a bit. Um, so this is an Art Adams, uh, New Mutants Forever number four. Uh, not many of these have been graded. Um, you know, five out of nine and nine point eight. Um, and this was this was a really sort of for from for a Marvel book, a, a low ordered book. You know, just over ten thousand copies ordered. Um, you never see this book out there. There's some for sale on eBay. I think people are asking somewhere uh, upwards of twenty bucks for this. Um, but 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 a book that uh, um, I think has gone under the radar for a lot of people. And uh, you know, people love Art Adams when he does magic. And uh, just thought we'd throw it on here to talk about it tonight. Anybody got anybody got this one? I yeah. do not. Oh, someone has it. Carter, really? you have it? You yeah. Have it? Yeah, this is one of those books you just kind of see, and you're like, yeah, all right. <laughs> for, cover, for cover price, you're going to do all right hmm. with it. But I, I don't see it digging anywhere anymore, man, like, I, ever anymore. Rudy, you and me both. I'm, I'm collecting magic covers as well, so I always take notes, mental screenshots in my head, if I will, and try to remember these books. I, I guess I always tend to forget to look into the new mutant section, because I, I don't know. But that's a good place to look for magic books. I think when I, when I check eBay, there are only a couple of these, a couple of these is li listed currently. I mean, there's not, you know, this book isn't spilling out, you know, of people's boxes or anything like that. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, just kind of an under a, a, a forgotten Art Adams one, I think. And I think this was 2010. Is that is that right when this one came out? In that time frame. Yeah, it looks around that time with the the square marvel logo at the top yeah. well and then art adams says i mean he's always been a legendary artist but i think he's just like growing in more popularity into like the new crowd <laughs> that's like discovering him for the first time right yeah no I mean, he's definitely a, an absolute legend um and uh yeah seems to be getting a bit of a resurgence lately for sure uh this is one of those books that kind of it, it it has an ebb and flow like it'll go up one period and then go back down and then kind of go back up it's a roller coaster for this book yeah i think that's right i think people forget about it you can snipe it pretty cheap Ooh, ryan adams makes a good point written by claremont never hurts yep all right uh so jg jones everybody seems to love jg jones mm -hmm. This is a weird book. Um, so this is an open order variant. Um, um, it's a Marvel Knights like Oma, like a like a throwback book. Like the the original cover, the original title has nothing to do with Marvel Knights, but they're basically celebrating twenty years of Marvel Knights with this. Um, just a really cool Black Widow cover. Um, we saw a nine eight in this book go for. 70 bucks back in 2020 but i think there's one somebody's asking close to 300 for this thing now only five of six copies on the census uh 58 000 copies total order of this book there were a few different covers but um this is one that you don't see that often and, and it's, i think it's really damn cool what i will say if we just flip to the next slide real quick quick there's a one in 200 which seems to be easier to find than this one um, but the one in 200, I don't think it works so well because it's a virgin, but just, it, it just looks unfinished. It looks empty. Aaron, I have that one on the next slide. If you can. Oh, okay. So here mm -hmm. it is right here. Um, uh, I just, something about it doesn't, that doesn't feel, doesn't feel right. Um, there's 14 of these on the census. Um, if you do the math on that 200, that's like, you know, you know, half a percent of the print run roughly would, what this book would, be, would put you at. So you're talking about um, 290 books, just under 300 books. Um, mm -hmm. It seems easier to find than that. This wasn't a period where they were doing any store exclusives or anything like that. But um, um, we saw our 9.8 go back recently for 85 bucks uh, for this book. But 
Um, this one's also cool, but I, from for my money, I'd, I'd spend less money, buy that trade dress. You get you get everything, um, and maybe a little bit more. Yeah, it looks weird. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a good spot for if you're big into signatures or remarks or something like that. Yeah, it'd be great for a remark for sure, right? Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, honestly, like, I don't know if I'm shelling out that kind of money for, I don't know, basically like a third blank cover or something like that. <laughs> it just, yeah, there's just something about it that doesn't that doesn't work. I mean, this book was set up perfectly for trade dress, I guess, when he, when he put it together, so... And even for the barcode and everything, it doesn't interfere with any of the art. But uh, yeah, just, just just a cool JG Jones book that I think worth keeping an eye open for. Do you think it was like one of those situations where last minute they're like, "All right, we need a, an incentive cover," and then let's just make one of these a virgin, and then they saw the name JG Jones, and it's like kind of like, "Oh, his covers are usually pretty like filled out to." You know, do yeah, that I don't know thing. when they do it, or if they got the art early and they said this is pretty cool. Let's let let's do something special with this one. I'm, I'm not I'm not sure what they were thinking on that one, um, but um, but you know the, I had have to go back and read this title. But they also did a second printing for this book, so something must have gone on in this um, for for them to be offering a one in two hundred. You know, a second printing. I forget. Yeah. What. Well, I know. I know whenever we have Knife Wonder on here, Hunter, like, he'll always state, like, books that have recently came out. Like, he's wondering if, like, some of those, like, B and C covers that are open to order are actually, like, not heavily ordered and can end up being sometimes more rare than the 1 in 200 or 1 in 100, you know, some some crazy incentive or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear him. I mean, I know, I know a lot of them go really underordered hard to say i mean if, if there's an exclusive then yeah absolutely that that could that could very very well be the case for this right. one i'd be surprised if people only ordered 300 copies of the uh of the trade dress of this but what the hell man anything's possible i suppose yeah and then uh before we move on jc mcgraw is asking magic most popular female character I don't know if she's the most popular female character. I would say that there's a there's a handful of ca characters that people love to collect covers of, and she's got to be in the top five, in my opinion, of, of covers that female characters people love to collect. But she's not she's not a household name by any stretch. But uh, as far as I, I tell you what, she might be on the top as far as characters that aren't household names. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, I would definitely say like within the top ten. Um, I mean, for me, it's in the top five. But I mean, for yeah, she's a badass character. Mm -hmm. What, I, what yeah. I don't understand, and this is not a topic for the show, is that the debate around her first appearance. Like, she had a solo <laughs> series, and like none of those books count for some reason. Um, but anyways, uh... I'm buying a giant size X Men just for. For her first appearance, I'm like, buying it. I'm yeah. buying it just for magic. <laughs> <laughs> Screw all of those other characters that are, you know, first appearance or whatever. Yeah, nobody gives a shit about the other storm. Who <laughs> nightcrawler, <Night> <laughs> Wolverine, fourth appearance guy? or whatever. <laughs> all right, and we have Tony Blue Green Artifacts joining us. How's it going? Uh, I'm right on time, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Early. What's going on, guys? What's up? Much. All right, so I just got to—I had to throw this book on here. I was watching a, a video uh, or listening to it um, uh, in the car, and uh, it's this guy named Ed Zombert. He's got a YouTube channel. He just—he just basically buys uh, lots of books and gets books for like you know twenty-five cents a piece, just huge lots. And this has caught my ear when I heard him talking. Is that this Black Widow cover? This is issue number five had a newsstand i can't figure out for the life of me why that like this one issue would have had a just had a newsstand but this is a picture of it here i looked everywhere like online right are, are there any of these out there i couldn't find anything but it's here you can see it um I'm not saying to go out and, and buy this but if you find it it'd be a pretty cool book to hunt to, to try to hunt down um talk about characters people like to collect covers of black widow i think is pretty high on the list as well 
Um, but uh, yeah, this newsstand is one that's going on my list of books to hunt um, hmm. in the future. They're all in 25 cent bins, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, during that time period, though, right? Like, this is a good time to pick up newsstands for just about right. any book. Um, I, I know when I was digging around somewhere, I found a a random Guardians of the Galaxy cover that we've all seen like a hundred thousand times, but by looking carefully onto the barcode, I noticed that the it was a newsstand copy, and I was kind of like, oh, for four bucks cover price, like I'm I'm buying that. Yeah, man. If you've seen newsstands from this era, buy them all day long, right? I just mm-hmm. find it weird. I couldn't find any evidence of any of the other issues in the series being made available on newsstand. Like, why would you just get a random issue number five? showing up yeah that's weird anyways no there, there's no there's no there's nothing else to say about this one but uh one that i'm whenever i see this book from now on i'm going to be checking if it's the newsstand copy so i hears you Ooh, they're saying that book came out in 2010 which is wow. is that the odd, odd type period of when they when did Mar- Marvel stop doing? I thought it was like thirteen when Marvel was kind of yeah like 12, 13. Yeah, I was gonna say twelve. And then it was like what fifteen or sixteen whenever DC stopped doing you stand. Yeah, they were a little bit later. Yeah. All right, uh, Tony, do you want to talk about this one? I think this is one you wanted to talk about. Yeah, yeah, this is one I threw up. We actually talked about this a couple of years ago back in pro spec at some point, I don't remember if it had made the list or if we were just talking about it in chat, but uh, Dr. Strange surgeon Supreme number two. This is one of the many books that had the uh, strange Academy preview in it. Uh, I know there were what, six, seven, eight of them out there, maybe more. I'm not even sure. Um, at the time we were kind of, and this is unofficial research. But this is, you know, a couple of guys doing eBay searches and Google searches. But at the time, it looked like this Doctor Strange Surgeon Supreme number two had the earliest release date of all of the books that had a Strange Academy preview in it. And this is the 1 in 25 of that issue. So hypothetically speaking, this is the first appearance of the preview for Strange Academy in the lowest print run. Um, there are, I think there's even some retailer variants of this, but they would have come out um, a little later. But anyways, uh, nice cover. Not a lot of copies out there. And I mean, just at the, the day we were talking about this, it sounded like there was some, at least some rumors coming around with uh, Strange Academy. I know a lot of people are sitting on on boxes of Strange Academy books right now. <laughs> yeah, I think they're saying that Disney Plus is going to do a show with Wong and America Chavez. That was the rumor that came out. I don't know if that's been substantiated in any way, shape, or form. Please do not take that as anything yeah. other than a, than a rumor, but I think that's, that was what was going around this week. Yeah, it, I mean, that would make sense. Didn't they, in the end of that movie, wasn't she practicing with the with the other... She went to Carmitage, I believe, and yeah, and mm-hmm. yeah, okay. you know, yeah. I mean, it would make perfect sense, particularly for those characters. Keep them, keep them front and center. Yeah, there's just so many first appearances in. I mean, specifically issue number one of Strange Academy, I think, is going to be a bigger even than any of these preview books. But uh, there's so many first appearances in that, and it's for how new it is, it's pretty damn like beloved by. By readers, by speculators, by um, so it's like it's like the early days of the Young Avengers one, almost right. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what it reminds me of. Like, and I guess that's like when I first started, like, really get getting bigger into like flipping books, and funding like my hobby or whatever. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I think people like it also when it came out and when Disney Plus was coming out. I think people just like the potential of what they could do with that kind of a book, that kind of a story, you know, sort of, you know, Marvel's version of Harry Potter or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, there's just, you know, they could, they could take that in a lot of different directions. And they're good at doing different genres. I think so far, Miss Marvel is probably skewed the, the youngest 
as far as audience. Um, but you could even, you know, you could have a true Marvel kids show. We all thought it would be power pack for a lot of years, but that's kind of uh, a little passe now. Maybe Strange Academy would be the better kid show. Yeah, I think that'd be a much a much better fit for sure. All right, this book is a weird one, man. <laughs> um, this is a tough uh, a tough book to find. Captain Marvel number thirteen. Um, this is an Amanda Connor one in thirty. Um, there are only twenty copies of this book on the census. Less than half in nine point eight, which is kind of shocking, um, given how new it is. Um, last sale was back before comics really went bananas um, for 300 bucks in, in, in the middle of 2020. Um, but uh, yeah, just a book that, that still, that still commands, you know, a pretty good price, um, you know, given it's, it, it's scarcity. Um, and uh, you know, I just, I forget where I saw this sort of jogged my memory and just thought I'd throw it on here. One, if you see out there at, for, for a, uh, <laughs> For a good price, we're, we're, we're worth picking up because uh, it still it still sells. <clears throat> I had this book back in the day. I, I am not even the least bit surprised. Do you have any idea what you ended up selling it for? Uh, dude, I totally forget. Uh, maybe, maybe a hundred. I don't know. I I totally I forget, but I was happy with it at the time. But yeah, this was when. Uh, 14 was the really really hot book and i'm just i was like you know holding out hope that one day i would find the connor 14 variant but i, I had this was just like the consolation <laughs> uh, yeah i didn't even know connor had done covers for for marvel at all like i thought she was like mainly a dc artist yeah no the, the 14 was a big was obviously a huge book Although that book has kind of faded, I mean it's the weakest appearance of any character ever, mm -hmm. really. If you if you look at it, but um, but it's still a beautiful book if you can get your hands on it. Oh, I would I would love to have a copy just because the cover's so damn striking. But um, on a side note, I I really like that Captain Marvel logo. I don't, I really pops. Should bring that back. The trade dress up there, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Joe, you take this one, brother. So now this is, uh, I found this one the, the other day. This is my new favorite cover of Campbell. So it, it's, it's got the bubblegum thing going. It's, uh, uh, it's a SDC uh, exclusive variant. I, I mean, um, just the way that it's done, it, 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 it's freaking awesome, man. Like Campbell, he's got a small little signature. He's not trying to like overdo it and and the background is really nice it's just a, a a clean a clean background i like the the green and the x i mean there's little you little secretly things. like it joe because of the bubble gum i mean that's the real uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah you, 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 man. The you don't know gum, why man, you fire, like it bro. as much as you do but that's what you're it's really fire bro like i found the bubble gum you don't have bro <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like uh when joe shared it to us like i, I was up that night and then he's like, "Do you think? Do you think Ben has this book?" I was like, "I don't know. Like, I'm not sure." Because <laughs> I didn't, well, I didn't get a reaction from you guys because I, I don't remember this book honestly. So well, it was I also like taking, at one hour time. So. Well, you know, so so I took a, a picture of it and then I blew up the bubble gum and I put an arrow bubble gum, <laughs> you know, like check it out. But nobody seemed that impressed. So. You know. <laughs> But uh, I, it but, made the slides, so yeah. It, but but it, it's pretty impressive, then, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, I'm if if uh, I'm gonna go scoop uh, this book up, so I'm glad Ben told nobody to go and buy it, so I can go buy them. <laughs> it's funny. I I just bought this book a couple months ago. Oh yeah, what'd you pay? Yeah. Oh gosh, maybe thirty bucks. Yeah, and that and I was like. Uh, I overpaid. I don't know. I just you I, I overpaid. Felt, Get I out of here! It's a bubblegum cover. I How many bubblegum covers has J. Scott Campbell done? <laughs> That's a thing, bro. Tune in next week for the answer to that question. Yeah. <laughs> well, for many. 
for as many as it says are on the census, when I looked it up, I only saw one listed on eBay. So, Mercenot, but, did you open it up? Is there a story behind the costume switches? Um, I don't think so. It's just some stuff, you know, just an interesting cover. It's cool. That's all. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple of theories in the chat. Like, uh, someone was saying, who was it? Uh, someone saying that they're cosplaying each other's characters. Mm-hmm. Um, Lord of Brooklyn thinks Storm may have become the White Queen. I- I'm not as versed in super modern X Men stuff, so I'm not. It's definitely sure. got to be. It's definitely got to be Jubilee dressed as Wolverine because she's always the one blowing bubbles. Right. Mm-hmm. You got right. Psylocke as Dazzler. Yeah. Right. You got White Queen as Phoenix. Is is a. Uh... Is that Hope as Jubilee? It looks like it. That's Rogue as... As As Storm? Storm? Yeah, they're all cosplaying each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's been a couple covers like that where... um, I know Kirkham did a cosplay variant where it was Jean and Emma Frost like cosplaying each other's outfits for like C2E2. Like a while ago, but I I would I would take that storyline with the storm character though, the White Queen Storm. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, possibly Kitty as Hasler. Mm. I just think this is uh so different. It it, it it's fucking cool. Yeah, I man, it's a lot of fun. Would it be iconic? No. <laughs> <laughs> one day, no, if, one day, if, you gotta, put, you gotta let it cook a little bit. Enough. Put, oh wow, look at that one! All right, so real quick for the Campbell uh, lovers, um, so this is Superior Spider-Man Team Up number one, uh, one in fifty by Campbell. Um, so this isn't the main run. Um, you know, these types of books tend to be maybe a little on the under order side. People love Campbell Spider-Man. Uh, there's only twenty nine of these on the census. Shockingly, 15 were signature series, which I thought was really interesting, um, which, which seems like a lot. But uh, yeah, just a uh, just just a just a pretty cool Campbell Spidey. Sounds like Joe, you don't have this one. No, Mm-mm. I I never picked it up. I, I mean, I you know I was really into the Superior Spider-Man storyline. If this is uh, the one from uh, what 20. 15 2016 somewhere around there but uh when they came out with the team up i was like nah, i don't want it and and my uh lcs didn't didn't order enough to qualify for to get this one so the team up books really didn't do much back in the day and they still don't i mean yeah. it's a sweet cover yeah it is Oh, is this part of a connecting cover? Late night is asking. Yeah, it probably uh, is. I it, it mean, definitely looks like it, it is. I mean, look, you got you've got the <laughs> was that Angel over there and Doc yeah. Ock. Yeah, I would say it absolutely well, must be. Yeah, I wonder if it connects with other titles instead of just Superior Spider Man. Hmm. Like, especially if it's a team up book, right? And I, I would assume that the, those are also one in fifties, but I don't know for sure. Hmm. Something we can look into. Something we can look into. Ooh, All right, Joe. You, you, you book, had a couple thing going, so uh, it's a threw bad this one book. On there. Let me tell you, this book is so fucking underrated, man. Nobody talks about this book. Shh, don't tell everyone. I still haven't. No, one I'm, yet. I'm, I'm just. Uh, <laughs> nobody talks about this book. Uh, nine eight. I I I I know a lot about this book because I have like four or five copies. But one thing on one of the copies, I do know like uh, severe color rub. And I even looked online to see what they were going for. And I saw some with the color rub right on the, the top uh, left uh, left hand corner. Notorious color rub on, on, the, on this on this book. So uh, be on the lookout for like if you're going to buy it, there's color rub uh, on the back as well. This book is really notorious for for those issues, but man, nobody talks about this book. And this is probably one of the best uh, uh, Deadpool variants I've seen uh, Campbell do. Just the silhouette, you know, just him standing right there. 
Well, I mean, this is also like uh, a mini series, right? Uh, yeah. Like like Deadpool versus X Warriors. I mean, Deadpool has a ton of mini series. I mean that that's basically what really got me back into reading Marvel comics was starting out like with some of these Deadpool mini series and then just building my collection, like fight, like going out and finding them. And before I knew it, I was like, kind of like, Oh shit. I have like three or four long boxes of just Deadpool comics. So, but you, oh, you know, okay, you Carter. Look at the characters uh, <laughs> on, on, Oh yeah. There you go, baby. How much did you pay for each of those? Like $2. Uh, <laughs> like, tw- like 20 bucks a piece. I bought these back, like, yeah, the Deadpool Carnage. Okay. This one, uh, check they the were back both. Of, check the back of the book, bro. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're pretty good. They're good. All right. But, uh, yeah, they were like 20 a piece at the time. But the, this book came out, uh, when, 2016? <laughs> Somewhere around there, 2015? Shoot. So, I before 2016. So, Lord of Brooklyn, here's the real secret. 15. I, I don't 15. shop around the comic shops around my area because there's one shop there that's like really close to my job. They don't even use backboards, but they just put books in bags. It's really annoying. Like when Savages. you dig in there. Yeah. Oof. And then there's another shop that's like on the opposite side of the highway and they overprice everything. But I, I, I will get, I always give them a second chance and stuff like that where I'll go there. If I'm beating someone, and I'll I'll dig through there, and then you can usually find some pretty good deals. Like I found the Invader Zim Alex Pardee cover there, so for like maybe a dollar more than cover price. So they did reprice their books, so I was happy about that. Instead of every like back issue being like twenty dollars, fifteen dollars, it it was crazy. I was like, how how's this place still in business? But <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I'm not here to tell someone how to run their business. <laughs> I mean, it's about time you start telling people off, Aaron. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm like, come on, come on, oh, come to the dark side. Join go to me. the dark side. Go full dark side and start like yelling at shop owners and stuff. Clean like that. this shit up. <laughs> this is out out of alpha this order. Is I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> I'm curious. You, you're the you're the huge. Deadpool fan, what do you think is a? Uh, I mean, I know we've got a Deadpool movie coming, but is Ryan Reynolds going to stick around after that? Or are we no, get no some freaking question. I mean, I don't see why they would just you know if they're <coughs> if they're willing to like put out a budget for a third film and stuff like that. I don't know why they wouldn't try to like reuse him. It was as, like, the biggest. Cameo. It was the biggest asset in the entire Fox purchase. There's no yeah. fucking way they're gonna walk away from Deadpool. Like, I, I don't I, think they're they're able, able, Yeah, I, I thought. I thought he had said point, he only. Will. Will walk away. No, that was completely taken out of context. There was. Oh, was it? He did. He did like some interview that was completely, completely. People had to backtrack like fucking crazy on that. He said, "This is this is the last one I'm signed up for," or some nonsense. I heard that it was it was it was a huge screw up. Um, he, yeah. I don't think, I don't think he's, I don't. Th- I think he even came out and said that that was misunderstood. So, thank you yeah, so much I for mean... your energy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so make sure you're liking and subscribing to our video. And then, yep. But yeah, yeah. I, I I can't see anybody else playing this character, man. You know, it would be tough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got the voice for it. like he. he you oh know, yeah. Somebody well, else it... can be in the suit. He can play that character for. For a long time, like he doesn't not doing his own damn stunts. So uh, well, I, I mean, he has a personality for it too, right? Because he's been a comedian for such a long time, and, and it was then... such a passion project for him. Yeah. I mean, he was the guy yeah. that released the footage to get the original movie made. So I don't, I, listen, I don't. It's become such a part of his ident- identity. I'd be really, really surprised if he goes anywhere. But who the hell knows? Right. I guess anything's possible. But well, I mean, and then the first film like was so low budget and stuff like that, but it grossed them so much money, and like right. it showed. It showed like people like, hey, fans do want to see a rated R Marvel film, and it's okay to do that. And so I think it opened a lot of doors, like for you know Marvel in general, and then just like, like kind of like gave producers like, like hey, right. if you do put blood and stuff like that and cussing, like people will still go watch it. Hundred percent. It was it was it was it was a milestone. So yeah, I mean. I would. I don't think he's gonna go anywhere, but you know we'll see. But 
I'm excited for the next one. So yeah, I'm looking real forward to it. Or if he doesn't think... come back, they can finally do some Gwenpool movies. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I think we could see other variants of of Deadpool in this next one. I'm sure they're going to make fun of the multiverse or you know mock it somehow. We no, get Lady Deadpool. We could get the the best was when he shot a uh, Green Lantern in the head. <laughs> no, <laughs> he shot himself when he was signing the contract. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or where they were making fun of their even their first the Wolverine Origins film too. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. was brilliant. That was brilliant. Yeah. All right, we better get this show rolling, or we're gonna be here till tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about some vampy frizzing stuff. Um, we talked about vampy for on the last couple of shows about how you know there are some really big name artists who have done some amazing vampy work. Um, and it's worth digging for her books when you go out. They're most of the time they're they're just wildly unorganized. They're just a bunch of books stuffed around, and there's some just some fantastic stuff you can pull out. Um, this is a beautiful frizzing. She did a lot of different vampy covers. Um, I've never found this one. I, w- I would love to, um, but uh, yeah, just a really a really cool Jenny frizzing. Um, not a ton on the census, but that doesn't mean anything because it's not the kind of book I don't think people are grading to begin with. Um, but it's a cover B, and uh, and and then I think one I, w- I would uh, happily snatch at even above cover. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I need to start. Re- I need to start remembering to look through Vampirella section for you know it's such any, a any, any, yeah it's any great artist deep. right yeah there's a couple more in here we can touch on quickly we don't have to spend all night talking about these this one does pretty well i mean this thing just sold for 250 bucks and a 9.8 um i think this was a one in actually i couldn't verify if this is a one in 15 or not but um this is a cover e um there, there is a trade dress version of this. The, the Virgin works a lot better. Um, too much of the background gets lost, but just a really cool one that I had never seen before. Um, and it was shocked to see how well it sold. And oh, that she one also did some Red Sonia books as well. That one's awesome, dude. This one, I don't know, is, 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 is brilliant. Now, what's interesting about this one is this was just the cover A, I believe. I got that right. But if you go to the next one, there was a one in 15 that was sort of black and white. Mm. This thing I can't find anywhere, like no wow. reference of it or anything. Um, and I think it's super cool. Nice. Yeah, that's a great cover. Hell yeah. I found I found the other one. Yeah, this one. So I, I, I found that one, but I, this black and white one, I want to uh, I want to track down somewhere so oh, with the color splash and stuff like that what's up with the color splash on it yeah it just yeah. it's like it's you know with her hair the red hair behind the hood up there it's just in the fire kind of burning i don't know it just whoever the, the coloring on that was done exceptionally well i think mm-hmm. go hunt down the oa for that yeah Look. probably well, out of my price range man well Fr- frizzen does sell her like prelim art stuff like because you know she's a hybrid artist where she does pencils and then she also does digital art right. uh so some of her prelim stuff like she'll sell through an art dealer uh so i'll give you give you all that little hint out there but don't buy the piece i'm looking for no i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> all right this is a book that i remember reading when I was getting back into comics, the story was so ridiculous. Um, it's effectively a story of um, Aunt May and Peter Parker, um, uh, his mom, um, when they were like at a summer camp or something. And it, it basically, this was Mark Miller who wrote this, and he's twisted. Really? As it, and it basically implied that. I'm not mistaken that Aunt May was actually Peter's mom, and he gave her, and she, and, and she gave her to her sister. If I think that's how the story was. It was fucked up. Anyways, the long story short on this one is, is that these were all photo covers for this book, except for this second print, which was, um, which was a Frank Cho, which was the first time a second I, I had a second print. And back then, like second prints were like 
worse than 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 trash. They weren't even considered comics. But this is the first time right. I had a print that was like this thing is like this is this thing is so damn cool. So you can still find these out there. I was trying to do research on what the orders of these were. It's really hard, but it looks like there are only about twenty five hundred copies of this of this <clears throat> one ordered. It doesn't go for a goddamn thing like five six bucks. But I do grab this thing where I find it digging. Beautiful choke cover. Something that's probably not in everybody's radar. Was this that same storyline where I don't remember what issue it is, but the, there's a photo variant with a, a girl chewing bubble gum? Yeah, it's right. Issue number three, a okay. big, big bubble being blown. Night. Uh, I found that like. Did Did one. I send that to you, Ben? No, I've got it. You you offered it, but I I, I have oh, like okay. five of them probably. So yeah, I mean, I I'm pretty sure I found that in digging in my back issue bin at at my LCS, which they haven't banned me yet. So I, I'm thankful for <laughs> that. <laughs> hey, take a take a um a rack of backboards. Hey, I'm here to put some backboards in your. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to properly store your comics. Yeah. <laughs> I, I set up a GoFundMe so we can get you backboards for all your back issues. <laughs> the funny so. part is they they sell backboards too. <laughs> all right, this one is just for uh, for Mrs. Bird City for Laura. I, we were, I was talking to Frank Cho, and you know she likes blondes and red gowns. So, Laura, oh, this one's for you if you're watching. Hmm. Uh, this was towards the end of the the run. This was. I think it went 37 issues, so not She's quite the devil. Black, but uh Frank Cho, for Frank for Frank Cho has a special knack for uh for drawing the ladies. So, Shit. so do you do you know the <laughs> the origin of the red dress and blonde comic covers? The the origin, like know how they got started, like or, n no, like how, how Laura always gets referenced. Oh uh, no, no. So when she first started podcasting on on the uh, hot 10 with Brian and Stein, you know, their honorable mention book was always like a golden age book. Um, so for a big, for a long time, like there was always a blonde in a red dress. And so that, <laughs> and so everyone's like, Laura, is that you on the cover? <laughs> like, <laughs> and so like, and then that opened the, the floodgates of her, like starting to collect those golden age books or like pre code horror books, whatever. So I always thought that was funny. Well, that's too funny. I, I did not know that. I I know that I think she they did a Matt Baker a really cool Matt Baker one several months ago. Maybe it was years ago at this point. Now I've lost track of time, but um, that I think they might have mentioned her name on that one actually. So all right, nothing to do here other than I thought it was cool. Yeah. Um. So this this is a um this is a, an Adam Hughes that kind of goes under the radar sometimes. This was a cover B. For Frankenstein mobster number zero. Um, there's just a cool vibe to this this one that I really like. Only two copies on the census, which once again doesn't mean anything, just given that this is not a book that people are ordering like uh slabbing like crazy. But uh but I do like the old school vibe to this and uh <clears throat> who doesn't love Hughes? Yeah, right. Yeah, I take it. Pulpy feel to it, man. He does the most random covers, doesn't he? Right. He shows up in the weirdest places, man. I've got like all sorts of. He's like, if I can get work, I'll do it. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. They're explaining it to him. It's called Frankenstein Mobster. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam's yeah. Like, yeah, I know exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. I got He's it. Like... I got it. He's like, yeah, I'm just gonna draw red, red skull on the cover and call him Frankenstein. <laughs> I bet yeah, some guys is, get sick of doing the same. But if I paint him green, nobody's gonna. Yeah. Know that. He, it's gonna look like the Hulk and Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, here's some cool books that Tony, um, that Tony brought up. Tony, I, I, I hope I got these in some reasonable order for you but i did my best so it's fine we can pop around um yeah these are um small publisher american mythology i don't know what they're most famous for i they've got some really weird ips everything from three stooges to zorro to some of these old edgar rice burrows 
titles. I think they had Stargate Atlantis, just kind of all over oh, the place yeah. right. on their IPs. Um, and we actually, we talked about one of their books last year, that acid bath, uh, book was, was from them, but anyways, oh, yeah, I remember Mel these, talking about them. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They, for most of their number one issues, they do what they call a sensory edition, which they just a print run of 100, um, you know, variant cover. They don't have high print runs anyways. I mean, they're lucky to get over 5,000 copies of something. Um, they, if you pre-order one of their century editions, it usually runs you like 40 bucks out the gate. Um, and most of them really suck. They're just black and white, like sketch variants of the regular cover. But, uh, these, they've got maybe four or five different titles that are from Edgar Rice Burroughs. Uh, he was a novelist from the early, uh, the beginning of this last century, um, kind of pulp science fiction, fantasy author. Uh, and for his properties, for the comics that are based on his characters, they actually go back and they take the original art by, I forget, uh, P St. John, I know it was his last name. I don't remember the first name, Pierre St. John. I'm not sure. Maybe I put it on one of these, but um, but they're beautiful. So the original novel uh, that for Moon Maid had this exact artwork. I think they tweaked it. They just you know adjusted the coloring a little bit. Um, but they're really they're really really cool. They're so hard to find. And you've got some examples in here, Tony, of the in these slides. I put them in there of the of yeah. like the, the the cover of the. Oh, here okay. We go. Yep. So there's the original book from Edgar Rice Burroughs. And I think this was, what, like 1920 or something like that, 1914. I mean, they're... Yeah, or he was doing stuff in the early 1900s. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Moon Maid is one of the titles. Um, this Monster Men was another one. Again, all of these are the original artwork. I, they, they may have, you know, mastered the art or changed the coloring a little bit, but... They're just really cool and they're the stuff that looks cool and is really hard to find is, is always worth keeping an eye open an eye well, out for. And you can't let the classics die out, right? Like those classic books that you know But these books are all ghosts. I mean you can't find it. Any of these ones limited to a hundred that, that Tony put on here, like they're gone like there's nowhere to be found, these books. Yeah. Well, I, I just meant like reprinting like yeah. like old text that you know, probably is not circulated in schools or anything like that, or it's like, you know, right. not on the all time classics list. Of, mm. I mean, and, and with a famous author, I, I mean, not to get into speculation, but it's very likely one of his properties will, you know, get adapted into a movie again. So who knows? You might see a, a, a moon maid or I like this science fiction one coming up. Oh, the name of it. H and H Comics is J. asking St. John. Thank you. Yes. Josh Allen, St. John. J. Allen, St. John. <laughs> They're beautiful. Uh, this one. I like. I love the look of the spaceship and the. Yeah, that's um, got a cool. Yeah. So cool. A little creature. Cool vibe to it. Yeah, definitely. But, anyways, just a, just a fun little corner. Some cool covers. That's a nice horror cover. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of book I would not pass up if I was out. Right. <laughs> yeah. There are these graded. I did look them up from, you know, maybe one to five copies of each one got graded. But, but yeah, they, they're really hard to find. I don't know. I don't know who bought them. And I don't know where they are. Oh, uh, that's because all the pulp novel fans buy them. Is, is this a Mercenaut book right here? No, this is one that I. What? J Josh has a ton of Bruce Tim to talk about tonight. <laughs> Although Mercenot definitely has this book. We, we, we had started. this book. Oh, Sold it. Sold it. Yeah. All right. You're like, gone right, out of the collection. Yeah. So this is the same series of the very famous Adam Hughes um, Planet Comics number one homage, right? So mm. this this is the. Um, 
another cover. This is a cover B by Bruce Tim in this series. Um, the interesting thing about this, um, at least that I found when I was researching it, is is that for whatever reason, Comicron had a specific estimate of of this cover. Usually, when there's cover A's and cover B's, they just put the whole order number in there. They had broken it out for the Tim book specifically to about six thousand copies ordered, which, in the grand scheme of things, is pretty small. Um, Bruce Tim is obviously a legend, and and this is a I think one one of his more underappreciated um covers but um yeah just a really fun fun bruce tim that uh has has a a relationship to arguably one of the bigger modern books that people chase in that in that hughes um number one i've got i'm happy to say i've got two of these somewhere um hanging around but um yeah just just a fun book so basically what I'm hearing is anytime you see any books from this run, kind of pick them up if they're at a good price. Well, there's a still freeze, I want to say, from issue number two. Um, that's pretty cool. I'm trying to think who did issue number four. I can't remember. Um, but um, yeah, the cover bees on these in particular are all, are all pretty cool. Yeah. All those covers are pretty hot. Yeah from this run yeah i think i've only i've seen the hughes one for sure at at a convention but it was it was definitely a wall book and so they, they knew about it so yeah you're asking. not going to find that hughes i mean yeah yeah i, I wouldn't expect to find, to find that hughes one for anything other than fair value yeah yeah but i, I looked at it and i was like kind of like is this worth grading i don't know is the armor glued on no it's just it's just a it's just it's just high tech armor um <laughs> space armor <laughs> it's it's bruce tim armor so yeah. <laughs> all right i didn't have many many details on these um they're they're they're, they're so damn hard to oh, geez. yeah so my buddy jc has been just sending me bruce tim stuff like every day and he sent me these books and I was like, well, they're not even like comics. They're like pulps. So these were done in like the early nineties, mid nineties, um, by like a super obscure, like, I think this was just some guy that really loves like golden age pulp stuff. And he like published his own pulp called hard boiled. Um, and he, landed bruce tim is an artist on a bunch of the issues and these things are like straight up ghosts like you can't you can't find these things anywhere and i've been like beating my head against a wall for like the past week trying to do anything i can to to find some of these covers because they're great i've looked for some of these man and like the, the, these are, I mean, they, I mean, were these like almost like photocopy? Like this doesn't even look like they were produced by like uh, like a real printer. These, yeah, days. they look they look really like like I would not be shocked if they weren't photocopied because some of the like if you look up his other like the non Bruce Tim stuff like they look pretty like shittily printed. So, oh, so like like almost like the uh, like zine kind of attitude where it's like a kind of like the first like printings of like gobbledygook or tmt yeah like like, I, like literally i think this guy like this was just like a pet project for him and he had the money and did it on his own and hired writers and got artists and started doing these things yeah there's some really cool ones in here yeah this is this is another one again i mean there's not really much else to say about these except for, you know, if you like Bruce Tim, good luck trying to find these because, like, like I said, they're they're nowhere to be found. I really like that one. That one is is brutal, man. That one is yeah. absolutely brutal. Yeah. And then there, I think there should be a couple in here that like I didn't even know were Bruce Tim, like. It had to have been like early stuff. That was one I just saw the other day, because like I was just looking at the hard hard boiled one. So that one's Shell Scott with the double take. 
So this I couldn't tell if it was Shell Scott because each one of these is like yeah, you know, like it looks like Shell Scott has a uh, a series of different stories. There's a couple others in here as well. Yes. Oh, well, that definitely has like that Batman animated series vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Like time, the right? like the posters in the background or like something like that. Yeah. Right. Somebody's asking if Bruce Tim had a naughty art phase. I think he's been perpetually in that phase. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what wasn't his like art books? Weren't those like kind of yeah, naughty? I mean, some of the, yeah. Sometimes the interiors in those are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are pretty risky. Yeah, because I mean, if you if you look at that right there, I mean, that looks like he just like took it to the library and like stuck it on <laughs> a printer and freaking <laughs> printed it out. I mean, exactly. I was lucky enough. I went on eBay the other day, and he had the cover proof for this one up oh, wow. for sale. So I snagged that. I'd like to own the issue, but <laughs> I, got the, I got the cover proof. At least you got the the proof of it. So yeah, I mean, and the, the proof looks, the, pr the proof, the proof. Looks way better than than that. So it does exist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I think that was our last slide. Um. I want to take this time to welcome the Team Nerd Herd uh, crew to the Nearing Nirvana channel. Uh, so on Mondays, they, they will be doing cover lovers from 6.30 uh, Pacific time uh, or 9.30 p.m. Eastern. On Tuesdays, you're going to catch the OG show uh, of comic book women at 6.35, uh, 9.35 Eastern. Wednesdays, we're back with Team Nerd Herd with their... Um, Mondo mail call at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific or 10 p.m. Eastern. Thursdays, thank you for joining us with Long Story Short. And then on Friday, what started the channel, the Nearing Nirvana show at 6.30 Pacific, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. And then on Saturday, uh, Saturday morning, there's the Toy Box a show with Team Nerd Herd at 10 a.m. Pacific or 1 p.m. Eastern. So they will hopefully some of them will start cycling through and joining us for long story short. Some of us might be joining some of their shows. So you'll, you'll see a lot of cross cross platform or cross ep channels episodes. I don't know what to call that crossover crossover on the same channel. I don't know. <laughs> But anyways, uh, we also want to thank our sponsors once again. Uh, so make sure you're using the code uh, Nirvana14 for the 30-day unlimited membership for only 99 cents. Uh, make sure you're hopping over to Bird City Comics. Also, I got this great shirt from them recently. So super comfy. The material is really good. Um, and I also still have... I have another set of these. I just have to find them through my back issues of the Nottingham. So if you're participating in chat, we will be giving that away shortly. Mm -hmm. So thank you everyone for uh, doing that. Make sure you are like Chad Caves, sending us a thumbs up. Uh, it helps us with the algorithm to build a channel and everything. So we will draw a winner. Oops. Ah, stupid hotkeys. All right. Good luck, everyone. And to the winner, just message me on Instagram. Mojo Quid. All oh, right. Congratulations. If, if that's a different Mojo, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's the same person, you know, I'll send you two copies. <laughs> but congrats. Um, and... Do we have, does anyone have anything else to promote for like any upcoming podcasts? Like Carter, do you have any haul videos coming up or? Uh, I just did a, a tape haul. Um, I have a comic book haul from a week ago and yeah, should cool. have some, should have some more stuff in the upcoming days. Sweet. Ben, Josh, Ben. No, I got, I got yeah. nothing, did man. You, I got nothing to see you guys you, next week. Did you me. show off your Secret Santa book? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. It's right here. 
So, so Josh got me in the secret Santa. I, I ended up um, having a conflict the night where the, we revealed who the secret Santa was. Secret Santa, um, uh, you know, people were. So um, I was. I get home and Josh is like, "Did you open your uh, your secret Santa yet?" And I'm like, "No." And he said, "It's him." So I, I rush up, and so Josh got me a beautiful minty fresh copy <laughs> of Porchy number one. Now, I don't want to open this thing and screw it up, but this is in a poly bag, which I have never seen, and I don't I don't think there's any out there that are in the actual poly bag, so that's pretty damn cool. Thank you, Josh. I'm super psyched. I want to send this damn thing in to get it graded, but I don't want to take it know, out of the bag. right? I've yeah. never, I've never seen that book in a poly bag, and I wish, I wish the artist would have messaged me back because I, I, you know, I hit her up and I was like, hey, like, is this how these originally came, and like they just aren't out there anymore, or is this like a special one or what? I mean, this, this book is, this has got to be a nine eight. It should be a nine nine, but yeah, beautiful man. Thank you so much. Who is the artist? Yeah. That her name is um... Olivia. It's a oh, French boy. name, like D. Yeah, yeah, it's a long name, the last name. DJ Gregorio or DJ Gior... Hold on. You're close. It's something like that. Well, and then I know tons of people throughout the on the Secret Santa reveal because like Josh showed what he got you <laughs> on that episode, and like everyone was like super jealous, and they're like, they're like I hope I get Josh Josh uh, <laughs> for, for the next gift thing. So, or, or you too, as well, like with that Starbucks cup. I didn't think that was that big of a deal. She said she loves Starbucks cups. So I just got her the one for the, with the free coffee for the, for the, for the, for the month of January. I figured, you know, I don't know. She might appreciate so Yeah. She was it. super stoked on that. So she was just like, kind of like, no. Um, then... I'm sorry I missed the show, but thank you, Josh, oh. man. Yeah, no Did problem. you get the book I sent you? I finally mailed out your, uh, your first um, Lobos cover. Did that show up yet? No, not yet. It'll probably be here tomorrow or Saturday. Cool. And then Tony, anything going on for you coming up not, in the next couple of days or future week? Not really. I just I'm getting uh, on the on, finally getting some stuff uh, back from CGC that's been a long time coming. So that's my own little personal. Sweet. Uh, Nice. Good luck. Excited about that. But good, good luck. luck. I, I I've been seeing you like grinding harder on uh on eBay and stuff like that too recently. So yeah, I'm going through little waves, getting rid of some stuff. I, I uh, it's not a great time to sell, but you know you got to do what you got to do sometimes. I mean, I think there's always exceptions to the rule. Like I I had a really big sell like not too long ago, so I was just, like kind of like I was pretty shocked, but like pretty happy too, because like. Cause I got my PSA bill in to like the same week. So I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, That's like it's the, like those grading companies must know or work with each other. It's like, <laughs> kind of like this guy's about to get a big bill. So like someone's got to right. buy his book. <laughs> yeah. I want to continue grading things during this period, but I, I at least have oh. to settle enough to cover the grading costs. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, I've got to get off my ass and send, send some books in. Cause, yeah. Cause uh, that those turnaround times right now are, killer yeah this is what i've been told so like yep. you don't even i heard you don't even need to fast track anything unless you're sending like economy books i the last yeah. one that went through i had uh i was trying the trick where you do a box of whatever regular 25 and then you pick one express put them in the same box so they have to open them you know yep. the same the, day the fast track books beat the express books wow by <laughs> like five days easy <laughs> that's easy. crazy all right. So I want to thank everyone once again. Uh, so make sure you're tuning in tomorrow for the one of the flagship shows, the uh, Nearing Nirvana. Um, I am not sure what they're planning, but it's always a good time because it's Friday night. Kick your shoes back and enjoy YouTube for the night, right? All right. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's why I'm wearing flip flops and no pants right now. So thank you. <laughs> and have a good night. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>